to be honest, like buying back right now would actually be not very ethical because I kind of like told everyone I'm selling and it, it really it caused other people to sell and maybe like cause the price to go down a little bit. So like it would be manipulating if I'm like buying it back right now. What's in your crypto portfolio? Bitcoin and Litecoin. That's it? Yeah. Do you not see viable projects that you want to invest in that you believe will explode? I do buy some that I think like cool projects. Um, but I, I kind of want to focus on focus on the, the core like Bitcoin and Litecoin. Um, you can use it to buy coffee or meals without having to pay a huge transaction fee. And you would use um, Bitcoin more as a store of value and for larger purchases. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, like today, Bitcoin transaction fees have gone up considerably. Um, it's sometimes a dollar to even ten dollars to to send a Bitcoin transaction. And it's it's definitely worth it for people. I mean, people are using it. People are paying that transaction fee for to send Bitcoin transactions because Bitcoin is in and still the most decentralized and secure and censorship resistant uh, cryptocurrency out there. So if you if you're paying like millions of dollars to buy a house, you definitely want to use Bitcoin because you get the most security. But if you're just buying like coffee or buying a meal, or, um, you're happy using Litecoin, even though it's less secure. Um, it's still like extremely secure in terms of um, cryptocurrency, and it's also decentralized um, and it's fast. So that's the that's kind of like my vision of seeing Litecoin and Bitcoin working together mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. fulfill the needs of um, cryptocurrency transactions. So is it kind of like in you know my daily life if I go to CVS when I'm traveling to get a toothbrush or I'm eating out at a Subway restaurant one night I might use again Litecoin, but when it comes time to like buy buy a house or buy another car. You know, I usually go to the bank and do a wire transfer on big stuff like that. That's more like a Bitcoin use case. Is that a good analogy? Um, yeah, it's a good analogy. Another analogy that people can think of is Bitcoin would be your savings account and Litecoin would be check your checking account. Okay. So okay. you would keep, um, for long-term store of value, Bitcoin is definitely, um, well, arguably better. And Litecoin is better for day-to-day -day use. Take me back. Well, first off, what year did you launch Litecoin in? 2011. Okay. And did you do that while you were at Coinbase or after you had left? No, this is before I even joined Coinbase. This was when I was at Google. Okay. So I joined Coinbase in 2013. So when you were at Google, you were working on, I believe, YouTube and YouTube Mobile specifically. What did you read or what influenced you to go, wow, there's going to be a market here. I better go invent the silver version of cryptocurrency. Um, I mean, even, even before joining Google, I've I've done um, like commodities trading. I understand like um, the concept of gold and why that's uh, valuable and how that's like uh, good money versus fiat currency today. So I've always known that. And when I saw Bitcoin, I realized it's like a better version of gold. The only difference is there's no physical form of it. And because of that, people complain that there's no intrinsic value. But from what I can tell, it's, it's actually just a better version of gold. It's gold where you can send instantaneously from one place to like the other side of the world for low fees, right? I mean, even today, $10, that's like extremely low compared to like, um, if you want to send like an ounce of gold from here to China, that's going to cost you a lot more than $10. So I see just uh, basically Bitcoin being like a super competitive version of gold and Litecoin, I want to position as like, um, as silver. Mm -hmm. Well, again, though, what influenced you early on when you were still at YouTube to say, yeah, it's, it's time to do this? You, you saw at that time kind of transaction fees going up, and that's really what drove you? Um, what drove me, I actually created Litecoin just for fun. Kind of just wanted to play around with it. Um, but I've kind of suspected all along that Bitcoin, there won't be just one cryptocurrency. Um, that Bitcoin, it's a um, kind of inevitable that the fees will go up because in order to stay uh, decentralized, uh, Bitcoin has to kind of err on the side of being um, decentralized, having smaller blocks and having higher fees than to go to other kind of the other route, which is to have large blocks, but having it more centralized. So if Bitcoin wants, to, it's kind of like you have to choose as the block rewards go down, you can't have the cake and eat it too. Initially people were, um, were spoiled, where fees were low, transactions were fast, blocks were empty, and Bitcoin kind of satisfied both needs. 
and that, that's because of the block rewards. The block rewards were something that were the miners were getting for free, kind of, and that will reduce over time. Initially, it was 50 bitcoins per block, and now it's only 12.5 bitcoins Is per block. Is that because there's a set amount of Bitcoin available, and that's why as demand goes up, the price will go up? There's a set supply? Yeah, there's a set supply, and um, it's kind of, I my analogy for that, it's kind of like um, stock options. Initially, the company can give out a lot of stock options to their early employees, but as time goes on and the company gets bigger, um, the company is worth more, but they're giving out less and less stock options. Yep. Um, yeah. And, and what is the, so when did you know it was time to quit Google and go all in on Litecoin? I did that in, um, well, I didn't go all in on Litecoin in 2013. I actually went all in on like cryptocurrency. Right? I figured out that um, I want to do, I want to spend my, my day job working on on cryptocurrency bitcoin specifically at that time um this is because even when i was at google i was spending a lot of my time like kind of um in this space thinking about bitcoin thinking about litecoin so i figured i should just do it full time and coinbase was one of the few companies that i thought had a lot of potential because they were trying to make bitcoin easy for the average person to use and Bitcoin, even today, it's it's really complicated stuff. It's hard for any, most people to understand how it works, why it works, what's all what's all the deal with all these recent forks and stuff. So making Bitcoin easy to acquire and spend and use was something that was needed and still needed, um, and that's why I joined Coinbase. Did you take a pay cut when you did that? I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, at, at Google, the pay was good. The benefits were good. Um, what were you? Was, do you mind me asking, Charlie? What were you making at Google? I want to understand what kind of pay cut you took. Um, I was making, uh, I was making two hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay, and, um, and and how big was your cut? Was it half that? It was. Uh, what can I, I'm trying to remember. It was, it was half that until I negotiated for more. <laughs> Good. Um, that's a good measurement of like, okay, how serious was Charlie about Litecoin? Now you guys know, right? He took about a, a hundred, hundred grand a year pay cut before he said, okay, I'm worth a lot. I'm going to negotiate more. And then you leave. <laughs> so you do work at Coinbase. When did you know well, it was the right time to leave Coinbase? Well, before that, not only did I take a pay cut, I also, instead of like a five minute commute, it became a 60 minutes commute. Woo! I was driving from um, Mountain View to the city to San Francisco. That's which almost is... worse than the pay cut. Yeah, it is. It is pretty much worse than a pay cut. It was. I was spending like two, three hours like commuting to work. So unbelievable. Yeah. Okay. So it was, so, so it what was, happens? Yeah. How many years were you with Coinbase? I was at Coinbase with for almost four years. Um, I left Coinbase just um, middle of this year. Just recently, here in twenty seventeen. Yeah. Why? Um, I figured it was time for me to get back into um, focusing on Litecoin, which is the coin I created. Um, and it was, I think I thought it was a good time to, for me to really spend time on Litecoin. Mm -hmm. Now, Charlie, you have to forgive me for this question, but, or maybe yeah. not really, maybe you'll never forgive me, but I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> You've obviously done well, right? I mean, I see like a $10,000 restoration hardware chandelier hanging behind you. I just bought the same one. I love it so much, but like you're yeah. doing well, right? How do you, most people I talk to who don't know crypto, they think well, if I do crypto, I'm just making the early people billionaires and really rich. And I don't want to help them get rich, like, so I'm not going to do it. How do you fight that stigma? Like, what would you tell people who would tell you that? Um, well, I mean, it, you can make – anyone can invest in, in crypto, right? So people who invest in crypto were spending their own money to, on something that was risky. I mean, buying Bitcoin and Litecoin was really risky. It could easily go to zero. Even today, I tell people like, don't spend money you're not willing to lose. Like Bitcoin and Litecoin could crash ninety percent. So is that how, how do you make money on Litecoin? Is it is it only if the value goes up, or do you have other deals with Coinbase where you take a cut of transaction fees and all that kind of stuff? I mean, for me, it's only if the value goes up. Like I have an investment in Bitcoin and Litecoin, and if the value goes up, I make money, and that's true for most people. Yeah. Um, yeah, and if and, and you I have the largest to, holding, right? I imagine since you created the thing, you probably no, got no, no, definitely not. I don't have. I definitely don't have the largest holding. I know quite a few people who have more Litecoin than me. And why is and that? I, well, I created Litecoin, but I didn't like pre mine coins. I didn't create coins for myself, right? I had to, I had to mine the Litecoins 
um, or buy the Litecoins off exchange just like anyone else. But and I obviously believe in it more than a lot of other people because I created it. Um, so I was there in the beginning, <laughs> right in the beginning, obviously. So I had a chance to to buy a lot of Litecoins at, at a lower price. And what, um, is that, Charlie, is that like a startup? Like when you say you created Litecoin, you know, a lot of founders of SaaS startups, when they create their company, they create a par value that's very, very, very small, 0. 0.0001 cents. They, you know, they, they create 2 million shares. You know, they give their founder a million shares and they keep a million for a 50-50 split, but they pay very little for it. Is, is it the same kind of an analogy? No, not. It's quite different, actually, because Litecoin and Bitcoin... The coins were created by mining. So when I launched it, there were zero Litecoins out there. You had to actually spend uh, computational resources to mine a coin. So that costs money, right? So whoever's mining it is paying electricity costs. Okay. Even today, you're paying electricity costs to mine Bitcoin and Litecoin. So they're paying electricity costs to mine Litecoin, and then there's a market that forms to decide how much a Litecoin is worth. Um, so like, I don't control any of that, right? So yeah. I can... If it's if I think that Litecoin is undervalued, I would buy some, right? If I think it's overvalued, I might sell some, just like any other trader or, or investor. Now you create the 